At East 101, we know that analysis by simulation can only go so far. In the real world, training of process engineers and operators is crucial in maintaining the smooth operation of a facility. At East 101, we take your simulation further. This diagram briefly describes the overall life cycle of a typical facility. Usually, dynamic simulation studies are performed at the detailed design and construction phases, and sometimes front-end engineering design or feed phase. What usually happens is that you pay for a study that takes weeks or months, and the results are buried in the data that goes into design, never to be seen again. At East 101, we can maximize the value of your investment by leveraging the dynamic models used for analysis to do training. When considering the use of dynamic simulations for training purposes, there are two options. Firstly, we may use it for process training. Process engineers involved in operating or design will benefit the most from this. Our HISIS dynamic simulation models may be used to demonstrate how well their proposed designs or operating strategies will work. These models constructed at the design phase function as transparent plants, where the engineer may easily observe everything that is happening at almost every point in the plant. Instead of treating the process like a black box, this will help them understand the process from a mechanistic perspective, which leads to more efficient problem solving. Here is a sample HISIS or Unisim simulation environment that would be used for process training. It is fairly complex, with many layers and objects to interact with, which are more meaningful to a process engineer. To train operators, this complexity must be hidden to avoid confusion. The second option when considering the use of dynamic simulations for training is the EAST-101 Operator Training Solution or EOTS. Instead of showing the HISIS or Unisim interface directly, we link the simulation to a separate human-machine interface that we can customize to emulate the actual look and feel of the operation panel. The objective is to train operators using a familiar interface. Underlying that interface will be the simulations from the design phase which demonstrates how the facility would respond to upsets and how the operator should act in given scenarios. In short, the EOTS leverages dynamic models from the design phase for training and helps to deliver consistent training by modeling the same facility being designed. Another possibility is to deliver refresher training as the plant undergoes changes which are first studied in simulation. Some simulations cover various operational exceptions and emergencies. The EOTS may be used to demonstrate to operators how to respond to or avoid these scenarios. In summary, by leveraging your dynamic simulation from the design phase, EAST-101 may train process engineers to improve their process understanding, including understanding of the fundamentals, how the specific plant operations work, and what goes on during emergency or startup shutdown sequences. In addition to that, EAST-101 may train operators to react correctly to a wide variety of what-if scenarios, and even test the client's safety and operating procedures. Here is a representation of a typical operator trainer. At its core is the engineering station, which could be one or many machines, depending on the complexity of the solution required. The engineering station is responsible for running the dynamic solver. It could be HISIS or Unisim or any simulation software. The relevant values being calculated will be visible from designated instructor and student stations. The instructor stations will have the ability to select exercises trigger events, and monitor the student's performance. The student station, however, is only allowed to respond to the events being simulated. Here's how the EOTS was set up. We start with a dynamic simulation model. This example shows a HICE simulation used in design phase for several analyses. For example, hip study involving blocked outlet. 
separator level and pressure control study involving severe slugging. Compressor analysis involving emergency shutdown. As you can see, the simulation may cover a wide range of operations. However, this is not seen by the EOTS end user. On top of the simulation is an OPC server. The OPC server connects to HISIS and exposes tagged variable values to OPC compliant software. The OPC server links HISIS and the human machine interface, HMI. The role of HMI is fulfilled by an OPC aware graphical user interface that can be freely customized such that it looks familiar to operators and is easy to use. Before we begin the actual demonstration, here is some background information on the case. The scenario being presented is one of severe slugging in the riser, which is shown in the black rectangle. The facility is an FPSO, producing during early field life, which requires gas lift to operate. As long as there is gas lift, production is generally steady. If there is a sudden loss of gas lift, severe slugging is expected. This is characterized by large oil slugs, followed by surges of high pressure gas entering the inlet separator. The large oil slugs may lead to liquid levels in the separator reaching LAHH and tripping the facility. The objectives of this exercise are, firstly, to show the operators what to look out for when the gas lift fails and the pipeline begins to exhibit severe slugging. Secondly, to show the operators the impact of closing the slug control valve, circled in blue, on the separator level during severe slugging. To achieve this, the slug control valves have been set on manual. At the beginning, the slug control valve is open 100%. The operator will then manually close the control valve to 75% and 50% while observing the effect of these actions on the level in the separator. Please keep in mind that this demonstration serves only as a proof of concept and does not necessarily represent the final product 